Hello, and welcome to Part 24 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, I'll be talking about the Solidify tool. Before I get started though, I have to mention there are actually two ways of adding thickness to an object in Blender. The first way is by using the Solidify tool, which you can find in edit mode under the Faces menu. And the other way is by adding the Solidify modifier, which like any modifier, you can add to an object at once and you can hide the effect of the modifier if you don't want to see it anymore or you can apply the modifier to make its effect permanent. I'll be talking about both of these ways in this video. Let's go ahead and get started and I'm going to click on my splash screen to get rid of it and I'll zoom in on my default cube and in this video I'll be making a treasure chest. In other words, a trunk that has a rectangular bottom and sort of a half cylinder lid. Let's go ahead and scale this cube but only on the X side to side axis. So I'll tap S on my keyboard, and then I'll tap X to scale it only lengthways like that. So now I have a rectangular cube. It's at this point that I need to actually apply this scale. I haven't talked about this yet in my video series, but if I press N on my keyboard to bring up the Properties panel, which you can also get to by clicking on this little plus, and I go to the Transform section with this object selected, you can see that now the scale of this object is no longer uniform. I've stretched it in one direction only, which means that if I try to use a tool like the bevel tool or the solidify tool, its effects will be stretched by this magnitude. In other words, the walls of the uh, trunk won't be even. This one will be thicker because it's being stretched. To fix that, I'm going to go down to the object menu with the cube selected and go to apply and click on scale. So again, that's true with both the solidify tool and the bevel tool. It has a negative effect unless you apply the scale of your object first. Let's go ahead and jump into edit mode with the tab key, of course, and I can now hide this side panel. To give this box thickness, first, of course, I have to delete the top face. So I'll click X to delete it and select faces. The problem with modeling in any 3D program is that faces are inherently thin. They inherently have no thickness whatsoever. They are two-dimensional planes. This of trunk, of course, is going to be supposedly made out of wood, so I want it to have obviously some thickness to its sides, so I want to add some solidness to it. There are several ways of doing this. The bad ways of doing this would be to just select all the faces and then tap E to extrude and then right click and tap S to scale. Yes, that would give the trunk some thickness, but I have these diagonal uh, top surfaces. I could move them down, but then if I look at this object in wireframe mode, you can see the bottom is thicker than the sides. That is not a desirable result, so I'm going to go ahead and undo that. I could also select the top edges uh, of the uh, trunk, and I could, again, extrude them out with the E key, and then right-click and scale them inwards. That does kind of work. I could then extrude down on the Z axis and then fill that in. But again, I'm not guaranteed an even thickness of the walls. How we solve this is the Solidify tool. So I'm going to go ahead and undo one more time, actually. And I'll select the walls or the faces of my cube. And I'm going to use the Solidify tool. And again, you can find it under the Faces menu in Blender with Control F when you're in edit mode. And there it is. If you click on Solidify at this point, It'll give all of the walls thickness by sort of like extruding them all. But down here at the bottom of my tool shelf, I can change the thickness. You can type a number or, of course, click and slide your mouse. In my case, I'll give it a thickness of 0.15. And as you can see, because I applied the original scale uh, of this cube, all the walls are the exact same thickness. If I hadn't done that, these end walls would have been wider or thicker. If I go into wireframe mode, you can see that the thickness on the bottom is even as well. So that's the use of the Solidify tool. I'm going to go ahead and press tab to go back into object mode and back into solid view. I'm now going to make the top of the trunk, but I will make it thick using the Solidify modifier. Let's go ahead and go to my front orthographic view, and I'm going to put my 3D cursor up here and add a new cylinder. From my side view, I want to make sure it's the same width as my original uh, trunk bottom, so I might scale this down just slightly, and then from my front view, I'll tap R and then 90 and press Enter to rotate it 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and scale it on the X axis with the S and then X key, and I'm just sort of going to eyeball the length of this lid while I'm 
working on it. I'm not being very precise. I could, of course, bring up my uh, properties panel and look at the dimensions and copy them, but we're not going to be that detailed. Let's go ahead and move that up. I'll go into edit mode and into vertice select mode. If I look at the trunk from the end, I can select all of the vertices um, on the bottom half of the trunk and delete them because, of course, I want to have a flat bottom. So I'm going to press um, A to make sure nothing is selected, B for box select, and delete. Actually, I've got to turn on uh, limit selection to visible or turn that off, actually. If this button is light, that means that you can select everything and it'll select the ones in the back as well. Again, when that's light, not dark. I'm going to delete the bottom half of the vertices and I'm going to alt right click on this edge and press F that selects the edge loop if you hold alt and right click on the edge and F is for fill of course so now I have the two dimensional version of this mesh I'm going to press tab to go back into object mode and this is when I apply this solidify modifier you apply modifiers of course under the wrench tab and with the object in edit mode or object mode rather I'm going to uh, add the modifier that is the solidify modifier. There you have it. It added a little bit of thickness to it. I can turn it up, of course, in these options. It won't be down here. Um, the thickness value right here is the most obvious one, 0 0.15. And I'll press enter. You see here, though, that did it? Yeah, it didn't apply it evenly because I did not apply the scale to this object. Remember, just like the cube, I stretched out this cylinder uh, lengthwise on the x-axis. If I look here on the dimensions or scale, well it seems to be a little bit funny, so I'm going to delete the modifier, go to object, apply, scale, I'll try adding the modifier again, and I'll turn the thickness up to 0 0.15, and there we go, the two ends now have even thickness as to the front of the lid of the trunk. So there you have it, there's use of the solidify tool. I'm not going to go over many more of these options. You can use this offset value if you want to change if your uh, inset goes interior or exterior. So if you want your trunk to be a little bit larger or smaller, you can do that. Um, but generally at zero, I believe it is, it'll be the same size. Let me just confirm that. I'll move this down. No, I think it has to be at negative one and that will make it keep it same size. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.